Hi, I'm Steve Smith, and welcome to another Saturday Showdown, the show that battles Apple-related gadgets against the products they're trying to replace. This week, it's a head-to-head -head battle between the Apple TV and one of its media streaming competitors, the Roku One. Let's get started. So both the Apple TV and the Roku One are very similar in design, so that's where we're going to start off. The Roku measures in at 30mm thick and features a very glossy design with only the number 1 in a matte finish. And it features the trademark purple tag. Whereas the Apple TV is the complete opposite and it measures in a little bit thinner at 23mm. They both feature this rubberized base to make sure that they don't move when in your media centre. And as you can see they are very similar in design with just the Roku being a little bit thicker on top where it tapers in at the bottom a little bit like a MacBook Air but they do both fit the palm of your hand. I'm going to give the design to this one to the Roku. Next up are the outputs. So the Apple TV has the power, HDMI and a USB which I've never needed to use yet, optical audio and also the Ethernet, where the Roku one surprisingly has an RCA out, HDMI and the power cord. This round is going to go straight to the Apple TV as I feel the Roku has wasted space with the RCA and also the lack of the optical audio. It's full HD so why wouldn't you want decent sound? Now for the user interface. Roku and the Apple TV are both very easy to use with the Roku having a category list of channels with the icons to the right of it. And once you've highlighted the channel there's a short description of the channel's content. Whereas the Apple TV on the other hand has gone for a very iOS inspired look. So anyone with an iPhone or iPad can pick this product up and get using it straight away. It has the icons which almost look like apps from the iPhone. And then above that it has the highlights of the iTunes store including the best films, music and TV shows. So in this I'm going to have to give it a draw. They're both very easy to use and very intuitive. So next up is content. The Apple TV has everything available from the iTunes store, including the music and the TV shows. And it also has quite a lot of sport with, it, with the NBA, MLB, and also Sky Sports, which is pretty big in the UK. Along with that, it has things like Netflix and YouTube, but from what I've seen online, the apps are very limited compared to the US version. But one of my favourite features about the Apple TV is the fact that I can stream music, movies and photos, all using AirPlay. The Roku, on the other hand, has the channel store where it features things like Catch Up TV, so in the UK it's things like Channel 5, BBC. I know in the US both the Apple TV and the Roku have a lot more channels like Fox and NBC, but a lot of these apps in the Roku store are fillers, so they can boast about the amount of apps that they do have. You can also stream content from your computer using things like Dropbox and also Plex, which I had a little go of and it was quite good in terms of getting video and music from my computer over to the Roku. Also the one thing the Roku does have that the Apple TV doesn't is games, which Apple TV should rarely have by now. Also with the Roku 3, which we will have a review of shortly, you can also use the remote as the game controller. One of the main issues I had with the Roku is some of the featured apps that I was excited to use were very buggy and they were very slow, so I was constantly staring at screens like this, waiting for my apps to load with things like YouTube and the BBC iPlayer. But overall, I give this round to the Roku. And last, but definitely not least, it's time for the remotes. So the Apple remote is very simple, reminiscent of the original iPods, with just the first wheel to navigate, the play button, and also the menu, which functions as the back. With the battery compartment being very similar to the Mac keyboard, it's also extremely thin. Whereas the Roku remote has a lot more buttons, Going up, down, left, right, back, home, play and rewind. It also requires AA batteries, which is probably the reason why it's quite a bit bigger than the Apple TV remote. There is also an iOS app for the Roku, which you can use as a remote, but I found this a little bit cumbersome, as there is quite a few buttons, and if you're trying to use it without looking, you tend to click on the wrong one. With Apple's remote app though, it's more like a touchpad, you can swipe across, up, down, left and right to get to the apps you want. Tap on the screen to select it. And then when needed, the keyboard pops up for you. What's also great is thanks to AirPlay, you can use the YouTube app 
straight from the iPhone to load your favourite videos right onto your TV. But try to type in your search on the Roku and I'll ask you to pair it through the browser, a bit like the old PS3. So this round definitely goes to Apple. Well, there you have it, it's a tie. I've got to say both products are great at what they do, but it does depend on your uses. If your whole media life is already on iTunes, then go for the Apple TV. But if it's TV catch up and subscription based content you want, the Roku rocks. If Apple gets itself into gear at WWDC, which I think they will, all they need to do is add some channels and an app store, and they'll be unbeatable. Well, that's it for this week. Leave a comment below to have your say. Do you prefer the Apple TV or the Roku? Also, make sure to hit the subscribe button to see all the best videos and giveaways for Cult of Man. Until next time.